All righty, guys, All Facts Media. My name is Aaron Robinson, my brother, Andrew Robinson. And today, we're joined by Binghamton coach, Brian Johnson. Thanks for joining us on today's episode of Coach's Corner. Hey, fellas, man, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm excited. Uh, uh, man, I'm really, really excited about what you guys are doing, and, and I appreciate being one of the guests on your show. No problem, man. No problem, man. So we'll get right into it. Obviously, you know, we'll start it off today by, you know, asking us a, you know, a little bit about yourself. You know, obviously, we know you were a player, you know, Baltimore native, played at University, University of Delaware, and, you know, then was able to obviously get into coaching. So, you know, talk to me about a little bit about your, your, your playing career and then, you know, your coaching journey and, you know, how you ended up at Binghamton. Well, you know, I started out, I'm actually originally from Annapolis. Um, I'm from Annapolis, but I actually we traveled uh, 45 minutes. I went to Mount St. Joe High School. Uh, so I played there. I was a pretty good player there. Um, you know, and then I earned a scholarship to, to the University of Delaware. So uh, in the meantime, you know, I, I just I always wanted to be a, a, a coach, but I didn't know how fast, uh, you know, that, that would happen. So what happened to me was, you know, I started from my freshman to junior year. Um, and then, you know, going into my junior year, I actually tore my ACL. So uh, I sat a year, redshirted, came back. Following year, third day of practice, I tore my meniscus. Uh, came back a month later, and at the end of the year when I was doing my end of the season uh, checkup, you know, they told me that I tore my ACL again. So, you know, I, I battled through some injuries and, and some adversity, but so it kind of jump-started my, my coaching career kind of in, in a way that, that I didn't see coming, but, you know, it, it, things happen for a reason, right? So uh, from there, you know, I, I've always had great coaches, and, and uh, you know, Pat Clatchy at Mount St. Joe, Mike Burns, who was at Winchester when I went to prep school for a year, and even Monte Ross, uh, who's now the associate head coach at Temple. You know, I always knew that I wanted to, to be in that mold of, of coaches that, that have coached me. So my first opportunity, man, I was, I was a Division II assistant uh, at Golden Beacon College. Uh, that following year, I, I became a director of basketball operations um, at, at UMBC. So I was able to come back home and be a part of that program. And, and that following year, I was uh, bumped up to being an assistant. Uh, so the next three years, I was an assistant. And then after that, uh, I realized that I wanted to be a head coach. So I was down in y'all neck in the woods and at, at Prince George Community College over at PG. And it was a great opportunity. I had a great opportunity to coach some guys and recruit some kids and help them get on in school. And then, uh, you know, I, I took a Division three head coaching job at Southern Vermont College. Uh, we had a very successful year. Um, and then, unfortunately, it closed down due to, due to some financial struggles. And now I see myself at, at, uh, at Binghamton University. You know, we were fortunate enough to – and I've known Coach Dempsey throughout being at UMBC as well as even as a player. Um, he coached against me when he was at Ryder. So uh, I was fortunate enough to be an assistant coach here, and, and we're, we're enjoying it. We're enjoying being here in Binghamton, New York. Nice, nice. Uh, so obviously, you uh, you know, despite the injuries uh, that you experienced while you were at Delaware, you know, you had a, a great career there. You know, scored over a thousand points, uh, won the top ten in a lot of categories like assists, you know, three pointers made, all that kind of stuff. Um, do you think that you kind of, and well, in what ways do you kind of combine like how you were as a player to kind of how you are as a coach now, and kind of um, you know, give to your players um, in in that way? Well, I, I think it's extremely important to just just give them a piece of myself, right? And, and to let them know, like, hey, I understand, you know, what you're trying to do with your career, all right, but also in the, just give them a piece of, like, who I am as a person, too, and kind of relate to them through the message of basketball, you know? And, and yeah, you know, I scored a 1,000 points. Um, you know, I was third all-time in assists, you know? And, but most importantly, man, I, I, would, I would like to believe I was probably the best teammate I could be, you know? And, and I want them to continue to, to be the best teammate they can be, but also understand the work ethic and the – and the tireless hours, hours that you have to put in, not only as a, as a player, but also as a student, you know? And, and I think just me having that experience of being a, a player, I'm able to kind of talk and relate to them in, in, a, in a language and, and, and as well as in a way that they can understand. So, you know, hey, it's, it's tough being a Division One, you know, student athlete. I'm not going to, as you guys know, you know, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you, but, you know, I think the, the benefits of, of you being part of a program and a team and as well as learning how to be, how to be a part of a, a team and really set you, uh, set you apart from, from a lot of other people that are trying to figure it out. Yeah. 
obviously, you know, during your time at, at UMBC, you were able to recruit some pretty, you know, high caliber players. You know, obviously, you know, Rodney Elliott did great things there at UMBC, and Jared Lyles, we all know, led that team to the tournament and, you know, did great things and now his professional career, you know, is, is embarking, you know, both of those guys, obviously being local DMV guys, you being a DMV guy, or us being DMV guys, you know, talk about what it's like, you know, being able to recruit in DMV and, you know, just just the the, the, the pride that, that goes on in this basketball area, obviously the documentary air, you know, in the water, I don't know if you've seen it yet, but there's been a lot of chatter about that documentary, you know, just, just talk about, you know, the quality of the basketball down here and, you know, just, just the, the basketball county, the basketball area, you know, that, that we have uh, down here in DMV. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to, to look at the full documentary. I've seen, like, bits and pieces, um, you know, people just posting it on social media. But, I mean, DMV, it speaks for itself, man. You know, and, and I, I, I'm sure I can get into arguments <laughs> with people that live in other states, and, you know, about, you know, the quality of basketball in the DMV. But, I mean, there's so much talent you know, in PG County and DC, as well as in Baltimore alone, you know, that, that you want, like for me, it's important to re recruit in my backyard, right? It's important to make sure, like, I know if I'm recruiting a, uh, a point guard from Baltimore, I know what I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get, a, I'm going to get a tough guy, tough kid, you know, that's physically and mentally tough. I'm going to PG, I'm getting the same, same thing as well as DC. I'm getting some guys that are, that can come in, to be honest with you, compete and, and play right away because they just, they, they come from that cloth of, of knowing what it's like to, to fight through adversity and, and to play against quality basketball players, right? So, you know, it, it's important for me to really recruit that area and, and make sure that, you know, uh, you know for me, make sure I, we're, we're there and we have a presence, you know, at Binghamton University. But everywhere I've been, I've always been able to kind of, you know, recruit, recruit in Maryland and DMV and making sure that, that I want to make sure that we have a couple guys on our rosters from that area. So, I, I mean, I love guys that, that are from this area. I love guys that, that, that love to play the game because I know that's what they grew up playing, you know. And a lot of people, they, you know, they ask me, hey, what other sports do you play? I didn't play any other sport. Like, I didn't play football. I didn't play baseball. You know, I, I played basketball. That was it. Any organized a uh, uh, game that I played was was straight basketball, and I think that's that's what comes from being from the DMV. Guys, really, uh, basketball is like their first sport. So what they want to do on a casual Sunday, Saturday, go outside and play basketball. You know, so that's just just what, what you're gonna get from a guy that that loves the game and that's from the DMV area. So I want to continue to recruit those type of kids. So, can I switch your gears a little bit? Um, Obviously, with everything that's going on right now with the coronavirus, the sports world has kind of been put on halt. You know, there's not a lot going on right now. Obviously, with college basketball, it's definitely had profound implications um, as far as, you know, with the spring recruiting period, you know, the spring offseason training period getting canceled, you know, kids aren't on campus. Um, and then even looking forward with next season, it's kind of it's still up in there as far as, you know, when the season is going to start, how it's going to look, are we going to have fans. So kind of talk about um, just from your aspect, how the coronavirus has impacted your program uh, at Binghamton? Well, you know, Coach Dempsey has done a great job of uh, having us, you know, meet with our team as, as well as meeting with the staff. And, and his thing to us is just to win the weight, right? And and his meaning behind that is is really just, hey, making sure that we take care of everything that we take, take care of in terms of just the academic piece where we just finished up with finals, but as well as like our, our conditioning, you know, and, and making sure that these guys are, you know, um, you know, conditioning and doing what they need to do in the off season. Obviously, we can't uh, police it right now, but it's important for them, you know, to make sure that hey, when we get back in session and we get back going and and school is able to to to, to resume, you know, we're not 10, 15 pounds overweight. You know, we're not we're not ready to 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 jump right in the fire because we don't know when this is going to end, right? So we want to make sure that we win the weight and make sure that not only that we're conditioning, right, but make sure that we're studying. So for me, you know, I'm making sure that, you know, I'm studying the defense and, and what we're doing, you know, moving forward so, so I can have these guys prepared for uh, when we get back in school, you know. So, you know, I think just, just always just practicing and, and remembering your craft and doing why you do what you do and, and really just taking steps to kind of better yourself as a, as a coach. Is, is how I'm embracing this coronavirus, you know, and, and how I'm trying to make sure that we prepare ourselves for, you know, whenever, whenever they bring, want to bring guys back to campus. So um, just every day, man, just trying to figure out how, how I can 
you know, help our players get better. And, and whether that's not only just helping them from a, a, you know, strategic standpoint, but also just mentally, you know, how can I talk to each player differently? How can I get to know them better, you know, and making sure that we're calling them and, 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 and talking to them about, about just real life stuff other than basketball so we can make that genuine connection with them. So that's all a part of just the growing process of, of, of helping them be a better basketball player and connecting with them so then we can win this weight and, and get to the next stage and hopefully we have this whole thing behind us and, and you know, we can, we can, you know, prepare to win some games. Right. Obviously, you know, from a recruiting standpoint, you know, we missed out on the spring live period in April. The, the summer live period is, is up in the air. We don't know if we're going to be able to go out and, and recruit, you know. Um, what ways have you guys kind of been able to get creative, you know, and, and, you know, talk to guys and, you know, focus on guys that, that you do want to have in your program and, you know, have you guys done any, any creative things to try to, you know, reach out to them or do what, 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 what are you guys doing from a recruiting uh, point of view? I think it's just, I think it's just staying in contact with, with our guys that, that, you know, that we wanted to see or, or potentially have up on campus, you know, and that could be by phone call that could be by FaceTime, you know, Zoom, you know, some of those things where, you know, it, we try to make it consistent, you know, consistent reaching out to them to let them know, Hey, you know, we're still interested. We still, we still, you know, want to be able to see you, you know, it's just, we can't see you right now. Right. So really just, really just staying in touch with them as, as much as we can and, and letting them know, you know, Hey, we still thinking about you. And, and, you know, once this thing is lifted, um, you know, we're going to come see you, but just making phone calls, you know, um, using, using, using technology like FaceTime and zoom to, to have a personal connection, you know, with, with those potential recruits as well as our own players and, and having them understand like, Hey, you know, we're all kind of waiting here, you know, the, for, for this thing to lift. Uh, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get out of it sooner or later and then we'll be able to kind of be in front of you and, and watch you practice or play or, or whatever. But it's just really having, having a strategy of just trying to be in touch with these guys. So obviously there's, um, been a lot of news recently about this transfer waiver that's said to be voted on here pretty soon, actually. Um, I mean, if this thing gets passed, it's going to have profound implications on mid-major basketball, low-major basketball, high-major basketball as well. Um, if these guys are able to kind of transfer uh, for the first time and, you know, be able to play right away. So, you know, what are your thoughts on this rule that's, that's getting ready to be voted on? How do you think this is going to affect um, programs, you know, at the mid-major and low-major level? I think it would be tough. You know, um, you know, if it's passed, it's passed. You know, I think, I think at our level, you know, you, you understand is, you know, with, with how many transfers are, are in the portal, right? You understand that guys potentially want to go up and, you know, and play at a higher level, you know, and, but I, I'm a, I'm a guy that's, you know, I'm, I'm 50, 50, you know, I, I think you should go somewhere where you're uh, celebrated you know, and, uh, but also I think you, you want to be a part of a program. You know, I, I think for me, it's, it's, it's making sure that guys are a part of a, a, a program, you know, and, and, and somewhere where they feel comfortable, not just playing at the highest level so they can say, Oh, I played, I played here, you know, for, you know, and, and then you don't play as many minutes. Like that makes no sense to me, you know, but, uh, or you don't have a, a huge impact, you know? So if the rule is, if the rule is passed, you know, it's something that, the mid and low, low major levels are going to have to adjust to, uh, but you know, I, you know, I, I think it, I think it could go both ways. You know, like you want guys to, you want guys to be, you know, somewhere where they want to be too. You know, so I think, I think that's a part of it too. Like if guys are going to jump ship, and you know, potentially transfer, well, you knew, you know that they did not, they didn't want to be here from the get go. So. Um, but you know, we just have to work within the work within the rules and, and try to figure out, you know, the right guys that we can, uh, the right guys to be a part of this program. And, and if it passes, and I know every program is going to have to go through it if it happens. But you know, I, I like to think that we got a good group. Obviously, you know, you guys are a program that that lost a big name player. Obviously, this this, this uh, season to, to, to transfer it's to a higher level, and obviously there have been guys that that have. Aaron on the side of caution where, you know, if this rule pass, you're going to see a lot of that where each year these, these lower level schools are going to be losing their best players to, to higher level schools. But also you have people that have said, you know, all right, well, as people from low level schools go up, people from higher level schools are also going to come down, you know, right. from, from the ACC. And all these conferences, guys that didn't have success are going to be transferred down to these lower levels. But I, know, I guess my, my side of the, my, uh, 
thought process is, and it's, it's always, you know, going to be tougher to, to, to replace that production, you know, um, losing, if you're losing your best freshman, your best sophomores every year, you know, these, these guys are, it, it's hard to, 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 to replace that. So, um, I guess what, what side of the spectrum are you on? You know, what's your thought process behind this ideology? And, uh, I guess, you know, just, uh, what's your opinion, opinion on, on that? I think that's why it's important to have balance, right? Like, like you want to make sure that, you know, when you're building a, a program, you know, that, you know, you have balance across the roster, you know, and, and that guys can, you know, someone, and it's not even just about transferring. Like, you know, if one of your better players who might be a top scorer, if he gets hurt, you know, then that could also impact, you know, the way that, that you play, you know, and from an offensive standpoint, right? So, like, like, I think it's important to make sure that, you know, if, if a guy is going to transfer, you know, that, you know, you have a, a, another guy or another two guys or three guys that can pick up the slack and maybe their numbers are going to have to go up a little bit, you know. But I think it's important to make sure that your guys are, are getting better and make sure that throughout the recruiting process you see, you see potential and you see growth in the guys that are coming into the program. So then if, if it does happen, you know, which, which is inevitable, guys are going to transfer, right? But if it does happen, you know, you have two or three guys on the roster that, that, can, that can pick up uh, the slack, you know. So if, if the rule passes, you know, then, then that's something that, you know, a lot of programs are going to have to adjust to. But I think that the best answer to that is to make sure that you're recruiting, you know, quality guys that, that can pick up the slack, you know, and, and, and that you trust, you know, you trust your eyes. You trust your eyes in, in terms of the guys that are coming in. If, you know, if, if one goes down, then two or three guys can can step up. Yeah. Um, I think in general, like just the landscape of college basketball as a whole is, is shifting right now. Obviously, you have this new transfer waiver that's going to get voted along. You also have this rule that the NBA is trying to pass, where they have this youth initiate initiative, um, where kids are kind of bypassing the NCAA as a whole. Um, you're seeing kids like Lamelo Ball who are letting them do go overseas instead of come to college. Um, just announced that the, the younger um, of the Kumbo brother decides he's going to go play in uh, Europe as opposed to come to college. So, I mean, a lot of, there's a lot of moving pieces right now in, in the game of basketball. You know, as a coach, um, somebody who's, you know, been, been, he's been a player, you know, he's been a coach, you know, what is your opinion on just, like, on the NCAA and what they're doing or what they need to do better for student athletes so that these kids are deciding to come to college as opposed to just pursuing uh, pressing opportunities right out of high school? Yeah, I think I think you know I don't necessarily speak on like the NCAA, but I think kids are kids are ultimately gonna follow their dreams and goals, you know, and and they're gonna want to play. Like I think, like, like I'm sure, like yourselves, right? Like you wanted to play, you know, you want to be a professional, and I know I wanted to be a professional, you know, and, and play, you know. But ultimately, you have to you have to make the best decision for for yourself and for your family, you know, and and you know I think in in terms of in terms of just trying to make that decision, you need to be able to, to, to get all the facts, all the facts on, you know, what's the best, what's the best thing for you, you know? And, and I think you, you want to make sure that, that you, you talk to your counsel and talk to your coach and, and talk to the people around you that you trust, you know, to make the best decision, you know? And, and, and sometimes, sometimes, you know, it's the hard truth, but sometimes maybe staying four years, getting a degree, and you know, making something out of yourself that's that's not just a basketball player is is probably the best situation for you, you know, because everybody can't everybody can't be a pro, you know. But you know, our our jobs is try to help and develop you for 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 that potential opportunity. So you know, it, you know, I think I think just moving forward, you know, if we have open dialogue with uh, with you know across coaches as, as well as administration and everything, I think it's important that you know, we'll, we'll come up with a solution, you know, and, but, you know, just making sure that guys are, are making the right decisions for themselves and for their families is, is what I'm all about, you know, and, and I personally think just getting a great education, man, is, is, is a, is a ticket in a way for you to really set yourself up for, you know, the next 40, 50 years of your life. So, you know, my, my next question for you would be, um, you know, obviously you, Personally, obviously, I have traveled a long way uh, in, in the coaching journey. You know, what, what is your goal for yourself personally? At, at, you know, um, as a coach, and then you know, how do you think that you guys can you know continue to you know build Binghamton and get get it to that level where you guys are competing for the tournament? You know, on a, on a regular basis. You know, I, 
man, I, I'm blessed, man. I, I'm I'm truly blessed. You know, not not only just just to be at Binghamton, but really just to be blessed around, you know, um, people. You know, I, I work with some very talented and extraordinary people. You know, and from my head coach down to down to our associates and assistants. I mean, like, I mean, I really work with some really good people. You know, and and even our players. You know, our players in our program are just you know, they're, they're self-starters, you know, they want to be better, they're constantly asking questions, you know, we're recruiting from the right areas, you know, where we're guys that, like, we don't have to beg them to get into the gym, like, they just want to get into the gym, where they come and access for extra work uh, when we are in, when we, when we were in school, so, you know, I think just, just continuing to, to figure it out and continue to kind of beat the bushes and, and really put in the hard work is how we're going to continue to make this program the best that it can be. You know, for me, it's, it's really being part of a culture and a program that, that breeds success. And I think, I think we're on our way to, to making that happen. And uh, I'm excited to be here. You know, I'm excited to, to be at Binghamton. I'm excited to be a Bearcat. You know, it's, 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 uh, it, I've seen, I've been in this conference before, you know, and, and at, any, at any point in time, any team can beat anybody, you know, so – you just have to bring it, you know, I'll be excited to kind of see where we go from here in terms of like our season, what happens, you know, but I just think that, you know, being part of a, uh, being part of Binghamton, man, it's, it's, it's a place that, uh, it's a place that, you know, we're going to, we're going to do some special things and I'm excited to be a part of it. Well, coach, um, thank you for taking time out today for joining us on our coach's corner. Uh, we definitely appreciate your insight and, you know, coming on with us today. So, you know, wish you guys the best of luck at Binghamton going forward, and uh, we'll be watching you guys. Hey, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for having me. No problem, coach. Stay safe out here. All right, y'all too. Yes, sir.